Today we're talking about crops that aren't best suited for our small backyard garden and why we probably won't plant them again. Welcome back to Better Terra. I'm Josh, and today I want to talk about some of the crops that don't necessarily work great for our small backyard garden, and some of the reasons we probably won't plant them again until the situation changes. I thought about this topic while I was planning for next season's garden, and uh, you think it might be a little bit early. It's January. We got snow last night. It's a little bit cold, it's not super bad. I got the fire here to help me out. <clears throat> but thinking about what we're gonna plant next year and what we've planted in the past and kind of learned from those, those trials. Uh, at this house, in this garden, this will be our fourth season growing here. And one of the main crops that we're just gonna completely avoid this year that we've done for the past three years is potatoes. Homegrown potatoes taste amazing, but in our experience here in the garden, we've done them both in the garden and in containers. Uh, with the containers, uh, we got potatoes back, but not the yield that we were hoping for. Uh, last year, I planted potatoes in about nine containers, and the problem was we didn't have any place to put the containers. I found myself setting the containers in the garden in between the box rows where I normally uh, walk. That's why I put the, the aisles between the rows as some place to walk. And the yield just wasn't fantastic. The potatoes that grew in the garden, we got a good yield, but it wasn't really enough to justify the amount of space it took up. So it comes to economy of space to harvest yield um, and cost. Potatoes are super cheap at the grocery store or the farmer's market. They're plentiful and they're there when you need them. One of the other factors was once we got our yield of potatoes, I think last year we planted 10 pounds and got 30 pounds. Um, 30 pounds of potatoes storing in our basement, which isn't the best a storage situation for potatoes. We found ourselves uh, in a race to eat potatoes before they went bad. So we were planting potatoes with every meal and we still lost a few potatoes. They started sprouting and growing. Um, the basement, it's dark, it's cool, but the humidity levels are just not where they need to be. Uh, lower humidity levels in a comfortable house steal the moisture from those kind of root vegetables. So we don't have the best storage location. So for this next coming season, we're gonna completely forgo potatoes and not spend our time and waste our space on potatoes. The next thing that we're going to avoid, uh, we did not do it last year, we did it the years before, um, was any kind of brassica variety. Now those are great green vegetables, I know, and they're not particularly hard to grow. But the downside is, a broccoli for instance, takes two square feet of garden space. And in the end, you get one broccoli. Maybe that broccoli will last you two meals, but you still only get one. Same for cabbages and cauliflower. Um, takes up space and you only get one vegetable out of it. We were thinking of maybe doing Brussels sprouts because you get many sprouts along the, the Brussels sprout stem. But in the end, we don't really love Brussels sprouts. We don't eat them all that frequently. So we're still debating on whether we're gonna maybe try it in a corner uh, and do one or two Brussels sprouts. The next thing that we would like to do, we would love to do, are uh, melons. We would love to grow cantaloupe uh, and watermelon varieties, but melons take up a tremendous amount of space. One melon would take up almost one entire raised bed. 
if not more. So melons is something that we would like to do in the future, but our situation has to change before we'll try melons. The next thing that a lot of people talk about is, ooh, I would love to grow corn. And corn is something fun to grow, but again, um, takes up an amount of space. It grows very tall. So um, depending on how your garden is situated, it could shade other plants that you need that sunlight. Plus, it is a huge nitrogen hoard. It will deplete the nitrogen in the area where it's planted. And it, like potatoes, it comes down to uh, the cost um, for the amount that you'll, that you'll consume. With just two of us here in the house, um, corn is so cheap at the farmer's market, and it's coming from a local farm um, that's already prevented against uh, pests and, and, and those things. So corn is not something that we've considered here. We hear it from a lot of friends like, oh, do you grow corn? <laughs> like, no, corn is, corn is a cheap um, option to go get at the farmer's market support the local farmers, and it's not gonna take up a ton of space in our small garden. The next thing, uh, we tried it the first season we were here. Um, it took up a good amount of space, and we found that we just don't eat enough. And that's winter squash varieties. So that's like your spaghetti squash, acorn squash, butternut squash, things like that. And those are the thick skinned varieties. And they call them a winter squash because they store for a long time. They have that thick um, skin, that thick rind on them to help preserve them. But like the potatoes, we don't have the best storage for those kind of things. And we eat maybe one or two winter squash varieties in an entire year. Not one of the dishes that we super duper uh, that we super duper love. For the amount that we eat, um, it's another easy thing to get at the farmer's market. The space to as much as we eat, variety, uh, just isn't, just doesn't add up for us. The last thing I wanna talk about here for us <clears throat> is horseradish. Uh, we grew horseradish last year. We did a couple of videos on it. It produced really, really well. And for us, we have to grow in containers because horseradish will take over a garden space. Once it's planted, there's no stopping it. So planting it in a container prevents that spread uh, in seasons to come. So we planted um, three containers this past year. Uh, I'll post links to the video down in the description of the harvest. We got a great harvest, but we are still yet to use any of it because we don't consume horseradish in any great uh, quantity. Um, the biggest use I found for the horseradish and the most successful thing, and it's the only reason why I'm still thinking about planting at least some of it, is the foliage. The leaves have a lot of tannin in them, and I use them in my pickle fermentation to preserve uh, crispness, and they worked fantastically well. Uh, the pickles during the, after the fermentation process were still crisp like they were fresh. So we have horseradish, it's stored in the basement. We haven't used any of it yet. Um, if we do it this coming year, it'll be a container probably here on the patio. It's got nice foliage, um, but it doesn't have any real uh, curb appeal, I guess. It doesn't have uh, blossoms or flowers or anything like that that make it uh, pretty, uh, worth sitting as part of the, the garden area. If in the future we have a different growing situation where we have a little bit more property, I think it's something that I would consider growing on the fringes of the property, uh, just planting it and letting it grow wild and then going and using it as we needed it. Uh, there's a couple of other uh, plants that I think would, would work well for that. Things that naturally grow wild, um, plant them, let them go, just use them as you need them. Those are the items that just 
came to mind as I was planning the garden for next year. But the common theme there was, <clears throat> Let me rotate, rotate a little bit. I'm getting a little extra warm on my knee there. So you probably picked up a common theme there is we're not gonna grow things um, that one, take up a lot of space for not a lot of yield. And the other things are items that we planted that we found out we don't really eat that much of. So when it comes to your own planning, really think about the crops that you like, the things that you eat, and kind of the, the effort to cost um, calculation there. So if it takes up a ton of room, you get a little bit of yield, but you could go to the farmer's market and buy it super cheap. Maybe, maybe that's a decision uh, that you make in your planning. I hope some of these ideas uh, sparked a thought for you. Uh, if you like this kind of content, if you like seeing me sitting out in the cold, go ahead and click that like button. This is a new year and a new season. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider it. It really supports us and what we do. Um, please click that subscribe button. I've got a few more ideas and videos like these. Um, if you don't want to miss them, make sure you also click the bell icon to get notifications of when we put out a new video. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for a couple more videos in this uh, theme uh, as we go on here in the early weeks of 2023. Come on back next time as we keep on working toward a better Terra, one little plant at a time. <laughs>